Welcome to Imperfect Momming. Our children are constantly looking to us for examples. The term role model doesn't quite cut it here. We are shaping their worldview with every move we make. You see, it's not in the lectures we give or moments where we are actively attempting to teach them. It's in the micro movements we make, the unconscious ways in which we navigate life. We are constantly teaching our children how to show up for themselves, their friends, their future partners, and even their future children. So what can we do to ensure we are raising thoughtful, compassionate, self-aware human beings? We have to become them ourselves. No one is perfect, but we can still all be better, and it starts with self-healing. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Imperfect Momming, and today we have a very special guest, and her name is Pamela Simon. Welcome to Imperfect Momming. Hi, how are you? I'm Thank doing you for having good. me. <laughs> Today has been a technical technological day, let me tell you. Things, I understand. Things going wrong left and right, I tell you. <laughs> Do that at my day job, so totally get it. <laughs> so tell everybody about you and what you do. Okay, so my name is Pamela Simon. I am the founder of Divine Mindset. And with Divine Mindset, I help parents and young women ages 13 to 19, um, mostly the young women. Uh, the parents, of course, they are, are there to reinforce um, the techniques that I'm teaching, but I help them to build three foundational traits. Um, so I help them with their self-acceptance, their confidence, and their self-esteem. And as they increase those foundational traits, um, they start to break through their fears and kind of find their voice. And, you know, um, they're able to easier go for their dreams and goals. That's so amazing. I just... I'm you're you're sitting here talking about self-esteem, self-confidence. And I'm like, <laughs> where would I be if I had learned to be self-confident and have a high self-esteem at age 13? Absolutely. Absolutely. So how that's, did you go ahead? I was gonna say that's the key place that they use that's best for them to learn it because at around 13, 12, 13, they're getting to junior high. Um, they're starting to think about you know, I'm, yes, I'm a child, but I'm also starting to have to figure out what I want to do in life, right? Um, and they're starting to question all of those foundational things that we, we learn, you know, in our community, that small niche community, and they start to question those things. And that's where they start to find themselves. So um, that's why parents are so important at this, is this point in their life to help guide them and steer them the right way. Um, because sometimes those external influences will get in there if your self-esteem and confidence is really low and take you on a trajectory down the, round, the wrong way instead of up towards your growth mindset. Yeah. Yeah. I heard a statistic that going into kindergarten, nine, 90 out of 100 kids has a, has a high self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And by the time they exit high school, it's 10% that have a high self-esteem. So it literally flip-flops. Yes, yes. And that's because again, they're out of that safe space that you raise them in, right? And they're yeah. starting to get all those external influences. And some people and some you know, kids take it in and, and they strive and some don't, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they only listen to the adult influences like the teachers, um, and they listen less to their friends, um, which, you know, a lot of times your friends don't know any more than you. And also they're trying to fit in. So they're letting external influences guide them and probably guide them the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I think about my story and like, I, I had a pretty decent self-esteem through sixth grade mm -hmm. and uh, probably seventh grade. I was still okay. Um, and then around eighth grade, I think we switched, uh, churches. My dad's a pastor oh, and, we okay. went, and we went from a church that had probably a hundred people in it to, you know, one that felt like it had a million. Wow. I, don't, I don't know how many they were actually, but it was like my brothers and I were the youth group <laughs> at the first, <laughs> at the first church. And then I was in junior high, a junior high room. 
and my brothers were in the high school room, like there, there was more than just us. Yeah. <laughs> and the girls at the church, I just didn't ever really feel like I was connecting with them. And looking back now, I realized that I've always kind of wanted that deep connection with somebody or with people in general. And I, I didn't feel connected to them because I, I wasn't connecting with them. Like we weren't connecting on a deep level. Like yeah. we would connect on, you know, Oh, how, how are you doing? That's a cute, those are cute shoes. And that was that, that was the level that we connected at. And I wanted so much deeper. Yeah. And I had that with two friends and you know, that was, that was it. And then the same thing happened when I was in high school, switching from a school that had a thousand kids to a school that had a graduating class of a thousand kids. And, wow. you know, it, that both times that was a really big culture shock for me. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's good though. I mean, I, I hear great self-esteem from that because you knew yourself well enough to know that those people you weren't connecting with weren't your circle. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I learned that like a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> I look back and I realize that I was. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. you know, a lot of times we fall into circles that aren't ours just because we want to connect, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's why self acceptance is so important early in life um, because those opinions of others kind of fall away. Yeah. And you focus on yourself and your likes and your strengths and you navigate towards the people that are like you and that can help you build those things and mm -hmm. feel great about yourself. Yeah. And I would have loved a program like what you're, what you're doing back then, because I think that I would have learned more back then than I, than yeah. I, like taking 20 years to learn this, that or 25 years that, you know, it's not that I'm not good enough because that was yeah. the message that I, that I got is that I'm not good enough. And yeah. really it just, it's just, we didn't connect and neither one was better than the other. It's just, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't connecting. And that wasn't your click. Those yeah. weren't your people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not your sure. people. And, and, you know, that's again, uh, why the parents are so important because a lot of us, and I'm not a parent, I was a step parent, but um, a lot of adults went through the same thing and just didn't know how to find their way through it. Mm -hmm. And if your child now comes to you and say the same thing and you have a program that's speaking the same thing, then you can connect and say, oh yeah, I did feel that way. I understand how you feel, right? But when somebody doesn't point it out to you, a lot of times it's not something that you think about right away. You just think about um, my child's going through it, something, you know, I can't relate, but really you probably could. If you really think back to your, when you were that age, you probably could relate. And, and this is why I believe that personal development is so important because we, like I said, I learned this a year ago that mm -hmm. it, and, and the, the lesson that I learned a year ago was empowering. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm like, cause I take pride in my, in my depth of humanity and mm -hmm. I take pride in the fact that I wasn't superficial and that was empowering to me. But when we're a teenager, we don't, and we don't have the guidance, mm -hmm. we find disempowering reasons such yeah. as I'm not good enough to explain what's going on. And I think that this is why, what happens when our kids are getting divorced, they think, well, I mean, it's literally um, if you're, if you're listening, I, that, you know, I'm holding my hand out, <laughs> this is me. And then this is the universe revolving around me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I've always joked, my family's always joked that that's how I, how I behave. But the reality is that, that that's everybody, yeah. especially from as an infant, you and your mom are one. And yeah. then as you get older, you realize, oh, mom and I aren't one. I'm mm -hmm. me and mom's her, and this is confusing, but we start to figure out who we are yes. and, you know, but at some point, unless we're given the explanation, we have why questions and yes. we're going to create the answers. Absolutely. Or you're going to go out and find the answers from someone that doesn't know any more than you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And a lot of times it takes you down, you know, the wrong trajectory in life. And eventually you will hopefully plateau and come back up. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes it takes longer for others, uh, some than others, um, but eventually you, you'll get there. Yeah. You'll get there. Hopefully. Um, but like you said, you don't want to be, for me, I started to get on the right trajectory. For a long time, I was on the right trajectory. And then I met some people um, around high school and I started to come down a little bit. And at some point I eventually started to make my way back up, but it wasn't until um, I joined the army when I was 25, when I began to really build my self-esteem and confidence up so that I, you know, could begin the right trajectory again. Yeah, that's amazing. So what, what was it that got you into, into this work? Like, what was the catalyst or what made you say, this is what I'm doing? So, you know, um, I actually <laughs> have a uh, bachelor's degree in educational psychology, and I've actually worked in group homes as case manager, and I've mentored. So it's always was something that I wanted to do. Um, and again, life, because, you know, you have parents that in family that teach you, you need to be able to support yourself as an adult, right? And I got out of school, like most people, and and I had bills and student loans and life took over and the money <laughs> didn't match the responsibility, you know? Yeah. Um, so I had to join the military and it took me on a different trajectory. And though it did take me on a different trajectory, I'm glad because it, again, built me up strong enough to want to do what I really want to do in life. And so it took me a little longer to get back to here, but I'm here now, you know, and yeah. And I didn't necessarily stop. And um, I know this because people come talk to me all the time from when I was in the military or just you know, friends from college that would say to me or have been coming to me to say, you know, you always um, empowered me mm -hmm. or, um, you know, have been a great influence in my life. And that's just me being myself and being there for them. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's a lot of ways like working, uh, I've started working with a business coach. And one of the things that she says is to write down the traits that you have that mm -hmm. come naturally to you and to work inside those traits. And, and that's, that's what you've done, which is amazing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you obviously always had somewhat of a passion for, for children and for, for social work. Yeah. Cause you said you were in a social worker. Yeah. So I was a case manager. Yes. Yeah. So I, it's funny, I joined the military to go get my master's in counseling because I really wanted to continue down that track. But, um, you know, the military gave me a particular job, um, which I was like, okay, this is my job. And me, I always want to be great at something. So then I went and got a degree in IT and I went and got, you know, and I continued down that track because again, it took over that I need to be accountable and responsible um, and a, uh, a good citizen of the world, right? Pay my bills mm -hmm. and do the right mm -hmm. thing. Um, and it kind of took me off track a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you found your way back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and it's not about perfection. It's about progress. And we say yeah. a lot in coaching that, you know, don't poo poo progress. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so did you get your master's or was that the derailing? I have quite a, quite a few masters, just okay. not in <laughs> just not what you thought. <laughs> exactly. I have a master's in information systems and then I have a master's in um, uh, government information so I have quite a few. Hi. <laughs> so I have warned my listeners that my son's going to come and yes. join us every once in a while. And this is his first appearance. So um, this is his, <laughs> and, yeah. the, and this is Pamela and he's a cat. So he doesn't talk. He meows. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. That is so funny. I, I usually have my little pup around here somewhere, but I guess he didn't want to listen to me anymore today. So he's gone. <laughs> so he peaced out. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. So um, 
what is what's something that let's start I'm going to ask this question it might open up some more questions for me but what's okay. a, what's a piece of advice that you would like to give to moms maybe especially of moms of girls since that's who you work with yeah um and I work with just parents of girls right because there are mom parents and guardians and dads that have girls mm -hmm. um but I would just say um take a breath sit back Think about yourself at that age and, and, and then go talk to your, your child, right? About whatever they're going through. Um, you might think that they're losing their mind, just like our parents thought that we were losing ours, right? But instead of quickly jumping to judgment, yeah, right? Sit back first and think about what you were going through at that age and what they possibly could be going through and go to them with an open mind and open heart. Mm um and remind them that you're always there to support them and to talk to yeah and i think the the golden rule treat others how you want to be treated like think back to along with your advice think back to when you were that age and what what did your parents do and what mm -hmm. would you have wished they did instead absolutely absolutely that's a good way to put it absolutely yeah. Because we always say, I'm not going to be like that when I'm a parent, but we quickly go there because that's what you know. Right. And that's <laughs> the thing is that, that we don't realize that the only experience that we have for parenting really is our parents. And, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and we don't know that our parents did anything that they weren't supposed to do unless we see other parents doing differently. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, your spouse will have a different experience than you and, and you guys can kind of balance it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have the same experience because you grew up in the same type of environments. Yeah. And so you, you, you go in thinking, I'm not going to be like my parent. And then that situation happens and you quickly go to your parent. <laughs> like you've seen, you know, you open your mouth and your mom comes out like... <laughs> I used to do it with my, I used to do that with my stepkids and I would just be like, oh my God, I'm a mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, uh, what I've noticed when talking to, to moms is that most of the time their partner is actually the opposite of mm -hmm. what they experienced disciplinarian wise, like where, you know, the wife, the mom is a um, is kind of loosey goosey maybe. And dad's like strict disciplinarian and those clash. And, and so if you can't, I mean, they can work really well together yeah, and they can clash really bad. Yes. Um, so, and a lot of times before we get married, we don't talk about this stuff No. Nope. and we don't talk about what kind of parent we want to be. We just say, I'm, I want to be a parent now, or surprise, I'm a parent, <laughs> depending on your time is that how it happens, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of times. Um, and it's funny because I tried for a year and a half, um, for my son and my boyfriend, everybody that he knows, maybe except for one person, uh, has been, has had oopses. Oh, <laughs> and, and so in his mind, nobody, you know, nobody chooses to be a parent. And I was like, no, 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 I, I really, really wanted to. Um, and so, you know, luckily we kind of agree on, on our style. And sometimes he goes a little hard, harder than I want. Mm -hmm. And other times he goes harder than I'm willing to. And yeah. that's what's needed. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's a balancing act. And when he gets a little, or he's on that path, and I don't think it's necessary. Um, I'll, you know, kind of interject and be like, okay, we're going to take a break now and yeah. we're going <laughs> to, we're yeah. going to separate because to me, it's, it's important to preserve the relationship. Yes. And just like in a marital relationship, if you have an argument and you say things that you don't want to say mm -hmm. or that you don't really mean, but you say it in the heat of the moment it mm -hmm. creates this chink in the armor of the relationship and 
and there's things that, that are difficult to come back from. That's true. That's true. And when it's not a bio relationship, like he's, he's his stepdad, like it's really hard to think of this person as someone who loves me and Mm -hmm. not someone who's just being mean to me. Absolutely. You know, especially when you're a nine-year-old kid. Absolutely. So, um, we kind of got off topic, but, uh, he showed up and, uh, where he got, where he shows up, I follow. <laughs> I'm actually surprised this is the first time and I could have shoot him away, but, uh, I, oh, no, 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 no. It's life, right? Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, once upon a time before COVID we expected slightly more professionalism and, <laughs> but now there's cats walking by and, <laughs> dogs barking yeah, and address people you know address people. <laughs> absolutely yeah so absolutely. let's see how can we get back on topic um what do you think is is there a bit like something that you can pinpoint as the biggest factor in a child's self-esteem i think again um, I, I, again, I say there's three foundational traits that I work, work on, mm-hmm. but really two of them are built on one, mm-hmm. um, and that's self-acceptance. If you truly accept yourself and who you are, um, then nothing else matters. And I, and a lot of times we find when you're younger, you don't care what anybody thinks. You're just happy, go lucky, you know, wearing your boots when everybody else is wearing their flip flops, you know, yeah. wearing your costumes when everybody else is wearing their clothes and you don't care. Yeah. But at some point you begin to compare and care what others think. Yeah. And, and that starts to break down your center and your acceptance of who you are and what you like. Yeah. Um, and that's where the breakdown starts. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to watch my son. Like he, um, you know, wears his, his socks up to his calf and then wears shorts and just, and we're like, "Mm, okay, let's roll your socks down and let's make sure you don't have high waters. I don't care about high waters. What's a high water. I'm like, trust me, we don't want, you know, it's like, we're, we're looking out for that, for those kinds of things when, um, when he's not really, and at this point, like pajama day was on, on Wednesday and he wore his normal clothes because he didn't want to wear his pajamas to, to, and he's, he's totally cool. <laughs> he, he's very much like, well, I'm, I'm good doing what I want to do. And yeah. if you don't want to do that, you know, that's fine. Peace out. <laughs> and that's good. Yeah. And a lot of times, like you said, we want to break them from that because it's not the norm of what we see. Mm-hmm. but that's okay. Yeah. You, you have to let them lean into those things because right. that's where their personality and their, um, their strengths and interests are to come out. Yeah. I think a lot of times parents, um, without meaning to, they squish the per who they really are out of them. Yeah. Yep. And like, I, I say my, my grandpa squished the creativity out of my dad. And my, I think my dad wanted to be an artist and he became a pastor, just like my dad, my grandpa yeah. was. Yep. And, you know, I think that he enjoyed it to, to a certain extent. And I think that he may have felt more fulfilled doing something else. Um, my, my brother is an artist. It's, it's to me, it's interesting. My, both my brothers are art teachers <laughs> and um, I've been a writer since I could put words together. And my younger brother has really followed his dream. Like he never wavered from, I'm going to be a basketball coach. Mm. And maybe that's not so creative. He doesn't identify as a creative person at all, which I think find is super interesting. Um, But he was much younger than (laughs) the rest of us. He's eight years younger than me. But what I hear is your dad and your parents, your family didn't discourage you from what you want to do. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. My dad, my dad went the complete opposite from his dad. And I would have, I would have appreciated maybe more of a happy medium (laughs) because my grandpa was like, no, you're going to, you're going to do something that's, you're not going to be a starving artist. You're going to do something that's really like, yeah, you know, 
I can't even think of the word. And my dad never, ever once gave me advice or told me what to do. And the one yeah. now, the one time he did tell me what to do, I did the exact thing he told me not to do the next day. So, <laughs> but, did, but did he, did he have an open door for you to come ask him for that advice and you just didn't open the door? That's a great question. Um, my dad was more involved in, in the church. And I, I think my, my brothers have gone to him for advice more than I did. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I felt this is one of those things This popped into my head when I was saying that, uh, we don't know that it, there's any other way until we see it. Mm -hmm. And, um, my dad was at the small church for a long time. And so we got a lot of attention and then we got to this bigger church and there was, a, I got a lot less attention. And I remember I wrote him a letter saying, Hey, I'm getting a lot less attention here. I miss you. And I don't remember him responding to it. Oh. And, and if he did respond to it, it was not the way I wanted him to respond. Yeah. And so I blocked it out. Oh. <laughs> but that was like the beginning of where I felt like my dad didn't really love me. Wow. And then I saw my, my friend in high school and her relationship with her dad. And she was an only child and he, they just doted love on her. And I was yeah. so jealous and I wanted to be daddy's little girl. And I was, and I was the only girl. And I was like, how come I'm yeah. not daddy's little girl? I don't understand. But what I realized later in life again, through my, all my personal development was like, um, that my dad was showing me love in his way, yeah, in his love language, mm -hmm. and um, and it just wasn't my love language, yeah. And so yeah. I wrote a blog article called "Ask Your Child Your Love Language Their Love Language," mm -hmm. because when I realized that my dad was showing me love, it just wasn't in the way that I was open yeah. to, to receiving it. I asked my son what. D does mommy do that makes you feel the most loved and he said when you snuggle me oh <laughs> at the time that was the thing I would do the least yeah and so I was like oh I caught it I caught the repeating pattern I can I can diffuse it right <laughs> <laughs> yeah awesome so yeah now but and I like that he said to cuddle because you know a lot of times moms will say oh, they're getting too big and I can't cuddle, but he's telling you he wanted to cuddle. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's probably, you know, chest height now. Um, he's at least 50 some pounds. Um, and I just let him climb onto my lap. Like, yeah, it wasn't comfortable for the 30 seconds he was here, but I'll tell you what, he feels more loved than if I had pushed him away or Absolutely. said, Shh, I'm on a podcast, you know? Absolutely. And yeah, we're in a, we're in a time, like if you've done that in the past and you're feeling bad about that, well, at the time that was the norm and now mm -hmm. this is the norm. And so I'm going to embrace the norm and, um, you know, and I just, I, I feel blessed that that's something that I get to do and it's important to him. And someday he's going to come to me and say, mom, please don't hug me in front of my friends. And then I'm going to yeah. cry and <laughs> it's going to be a whole thing. <laughs> You're going to be like, what? I thought this was your love language. <laughs> well, and then I'll have to say, okay, what's the new thing that I'm allowed to do that makes you feel the most loved? Oh, just not in front of your friends? Okay, cool. I love that. That's, that's good though. That's a good question to ask your kids. What is your love language? How can I um, better um, give you what you need? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think that I became a writer because my dad was always reading and I never wrote anything that he would ever want to read, but that's okay. You, you know, he, you kind of took that in. It was a way to connect with him. Yeah. And I, and I love writing so much now, like it's my favorite thing. And, um, on, you know, the 15th of June, whenever this is being aired, it's past that. Um, but I had a, one of my blog articles published in an online magazine and he's like super proud of me. And, and so wow. is my mom. And in a way that like, it was, it was shocking to me. 
awesome. And the my little girl inside was just like, oh, my parents are proud of me. They love me. <laughs> they love me so much. And I've mentioned this on another podcast episode, but um, my life coach, uh, Sean Smith, wrote a book called Daddy, Are You Proud of Me? Mm. And it's about the father daughter relationship, but, um, eventually I'm going to have him on the podcast to announce the release of the book. I'm hoping, um, he didn't say no to coming on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) We'll put it that way. Um, but it's, it's the father daughter relationship and how self-esteem for women is super connected to Mm -hmm. father figure relationship. And the beautiful thing about the book is it has this hidden talent of healing mm-hmm. the woman who reads it. Wow. She didn't have the relationship that she wanted. I would love to read that. Um, yeah. I would love to read it only because I, I didn't have a relationship with my dad, but it's because he died when I was two. Mm. So I always longed for that relationship. You know, I have my mom and everybody else kind of tries to fill the gap. But, you know, I feel for lack of a better way to say it, cheated, yeah. right? That I didn't have that relationship or um, nobody feel the gap enough for me to understand what that looked like. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, one thing that he said inside creating that book was that boys grow up to want to marry their moms Mm -hmm. They want to be like their dad. And, you know, I, I didn't like that for either option at the (laughs) time. I was like, I do not want him marrying anyone like who I am right now. Yeah. (laughs) And I don't want him becoming his dad. And so, well, while I was searching for a partner or filtering through who could be a partner, Mm -hmm. who could fill that that father role in his life, I was looking at men through that filter of who do I want my son to become? Wow. And, and then I also have to be the kind of woman that attracts that kind of man. And, and I have to be the kind of woman that I would want my son, that I would be proud of my son marrying. Yeah. And, and so that was a huge catalyst for all of the change that I started doing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a great testimony. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) it's a really good book. (laughs) He's been talking about it. I heard about it since in 2017. He's been like, it's been in creation probably since before then. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, I mean, that, that man changed my life. Well, (laughs) We'll just say that. And he changed my son's life and, and everybody whose life's that I'm touching. So wow. That's um, awesome. yeah, I sing his praises a lot. I'll stop. <laughs> um, okay. So when we were talking in our pre-interview interview, mm-hmm. you said, I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> okay. No worries. You said when a teen starts to question what they've learned, It's not an affront to you and your beliefs as the parent or something along those lines. Yeah. So um, a lot of times (laughs) parents sometimes get, um, what's the word, insulted, Mm -hmm. for lack of a better way to say it, that you would dare listen to what somebody else says about a particular topic that you've taught them about their whole lives but why not question it yeah right a lot of great things came out of people questioning what was previously said yeah right so um I think the word you may have been looking for is they get threatened threatened yeah, some okay. some get insulted because <laughs> what I yeah. get insulted is because they're like, how dare you talk to my child about blah, right. blah, blah, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and again, I, it's a good thing though, right? That they're going to ask questions about things they learned in school, things they're seeing in the world, mm-hmm. um, things that they think may be wrong. Right. Uh, 
but I would say keep the door open and let them know if they see those things or feel like something's wrong or question something, come to you as well, right? And say, mom or dad or guardian or whoever, you've always taught me this, but now in school, they're teaching me this. What, which way should I go, right? Or what's the right answer? I think that religion and politics are probably two really, especially, I mean, politics is polarizing Mm -hmm. in social media. It's polarizing in families. Mm -hmm. And that's a really tough uh, topic to navigate, especially when your family believes one way and you believe, and you are questioning to believe another way. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But again, we are our own human being, right? And at the end of the day, um, you're going to be a whole grown adult right. <laughs> having to live with all your own decisions, mm-hmm. right? And you don't want to resent, or you don't want your child to resent you for forcing them to go your way when they really in their heart felt that it was right to go another way. Yeah. Really want to keep those relationships. And it really is difficult when you're talking about religion or politics that people get super entrenched in their beliefs in, and now your child wants to go a different direction. And, you know, the, I think that the, the best way to get a child to do something you don't want them to do is tell them not to do it. (laughs) I married my son's dad because my dad said, don't Don't. get married. (laughs) Yeah. I married him two days later. I'm not joking. Wow. And I didn't think about it till later. I was like, huh, that's the one time he ever told me what to do. And I did the immediate opposite. Now we were already talking about getting married when he said that. Yeah. (laughs) But we eloped. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that is a way for a reason because you know my son's now he exists and he yeah. wouldn't have otherwise but yeah so that's the good mm-hmm. that's the good out of it yeah um but you're right um sometimes if you tell them to do one thing they're going to go the opposite way anyway so mm-hmm. we just have to be you know we ha- I don't want to say tiptoe we have to be very gentle yeah. about how we approach things when they're asking questions or questioning things that we've taught them or because I mean you should be curious right you should be yeah we have the curiosity squished out of us very Mm -hmm. very Very early Mm -hmm. and um again something Sean said that was super profound to me (laughs) was um he said that the best kind of coach is someone who asks why like a three-year-old just Mm -hmm. why 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 and Xander was six at the time and so I said my six-year-old still does that and (laughs) he just off the cuff goes good you haven't squished it out of him yet and that just hurt my heart that that's what happens is our curiosity gets squished out of us and it gets squished out of us because we're happy because we as a parent and as a human who's overworked and underpaid and super stressed and all of these things is having a bad day yeah and doesn't have the patience to answer why (laughs) for the 47th time yeah Yeah. and what i tell parents to do because that happens a lot you work all day, you come home, you're tired, and then you have this kid that's excited about the day and they want to talk to you and take your time. You know, don't say, no, I don't want to answer that, or I can't do that. Just say, give me 10 minutes to take a breather, or can we talk at dinner? I really want to hear what you're saying, but can we talk at dinner? That way they know that you're excited as well to hear what they have to say, but you just need that breath, you know, just that breather (laughs) from all of the day. Yeah. Cause there's a meme out there somewhere that says, if you don't heal from the wounds that someone else gave you, you're going to bleed on people who didn't cut you. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. and that's I our kids like that. <laughs> and that's our kids. Yeah. 
Yeah. And a lot of times it's our kids. It's anybody, you know, it's a person you're in a relationship with. It's a mm -hmm. kids, it's your coworkers, it's your subordinates, it's your boss, you know, whoever, yeah. like it's humanity. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. So <laughs> I asked you about the advice. So what's a personal development book that has been super impactful on your mm -hmm. life? I read so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think I put you on the spot too. Cause every yeah. Time, yeah. <laughs> She's like, hold on. Let me look at my book collection. <laughs> no, I have so many. Um, you know, it's not a person. It, it kind of is, but it's not. Um, yeah. I really love this book. The one thing just because, um, I am a very, I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. And I'm a go, 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 go person. I want to do all the things. Yeah. Um, but this book really helped me to stop, think about what's really important and do those things. Right. Yeah. So I really love this book. Uh, I know it wouldn't, you wouldn't think that it's like a personal development type book, but it is. And I really love it. It's, it's helped me a lot. Yeah. My <laughs> business coach, one of the things that she says is focus instead of having your six most important things or your never ending to-do list, pick one thing that you're going to focus on. And that one thing could be, you know, watering the, the seeds that you've planted, yeah. you know, and that one thing could be calling 25 people or whatever, this is, you know, business, but that one thing could be, I'm going to be fully present with my children today. Yes. Absolutely. You know, and, but pick one thing that's going to be the most important thing to you. Um, I read a gratitude book called um, Thank and Grow Rich, which is a play on Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and one of the suggestions, she has these party favors and it's just different ways of expressing gratitude. And one of the thing, one of the suggestions is treat everybody like it's their birthday today. Mm. And that is really impactful for me because I'm a Leo and I love birthdays. <laughs> Every night loves birthdays. I'm an Aries and I love birthdays. <laughs> yeah. My mom hates her birthday, but, but she was number five of seven kids. And wow. so she wow. liked the sudden burst of attention that you would get on your birthday. Right. And so oh God, I don't want your attention. Get away from me, please. <laughs> right. Don't give me, don't give me the attention. And the funny thing is I'm the opposite. I don't like the day after my birthday because I got all of the attention on my birthday. And now I'm go, I'm a freaking attention junkie. And now I'm going through withdrawals. <laughs> wow. Um, I was going to tell you about this other thing that I'm doing. And I actually saw this on, um, Cameron Diaz, she, um, I, I follow her on Instagram, her and Drew Barrymore. I love to watch them because they're like besties and they're crazy. Um, but she posted about this um, journal called What's Your Story? Okay. Um, and it basically just goes through um, this litany of questions of, and you kind of are questioning everything in your life and how you got there. I love it. I'm just in the beginning of it and I love it. And it, and it kind of helps you write your story. Yeah. Of life. Yeah. And I think that that would even be really impactful for 13 to 19 year olds, because yeah. if they're, if they'll share it with you, you can take their disempowering story mm -hmm. and make it empowering. Absolutely. One yeah. of the, one of the tools that we do, um, I had a, a guest on my podcast. I don't know if she's going to be before this one or after this one, because mm -hmm. I'm pre-recording all of them, but her name is Teresa Strong. And she wrote a book called Attacked in Anger, but Died in Love. Wow. Her father was attacked by her, his best friend and stabbed, and he died in her mother's arms. Wow. And so she was three years old, lost her dad. And that's how the story was told. The story was told in, in this, you know, my dad's best friend stabbed him to death and he died. And, you know, what a jerk this guy was. Obviously the guy's a jerk, you know, and <laughs> that there's no question about that, but yeah. it was held onto in so much pain. Wow. And 
So the, the instruction was tell the story in a disempowering way, which is usually how we st- tell our story mm-hmm. <laughs> with the disempowering um, lens on it. And then he would say, tell the exact same story in a positive way. And she, that was the first time she said he was attacked in anger, but he died in love. Wow. And like, I get chills every time I say it. <laughs> it's like a yeah, I love it that wow yeah Yeah, she's an amazing she's an amazing woman I you know and um anyway (laughs) a lot of amazing people I mean that's that's awesome yeah (laughs) yeah so many amazing people that I've had the pleasure of having on my podcast which includes you Pamela so thank you for being here (laughs) and uh if you have any final thoughts then you share that you can go ahead and share those um, no, thank you for having me today. Um, and uh, if you want to reach me, you can reach me on um, divinemindsetcoaching.com. Uh, I do clarity sessions all the time. I always do um, free workshops every couple of weeks, every couple of months. Um, I'm getting ready to do one June 21st. So if you see this before it, jump in. If you don't see this before, just look for the next one. Next one um, yeah, a- absolutely. And, and if you just want to talk and you have questions, I'm always available. So thanks again for letting me be here. That's so awesome. I really do appreciate that. And it probably won't be before June 21st. The podcast will launch on July 1st. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Because like I said, I do it all the time. You can always reach out to me. That's mm-hmm. amazing. So that's, uh, awesome. <laughs> Um, so again, thank you for being here and, um, we will be back with another episode next week. Um, in the meantime, go ahead and like subscribe, review all those fun things that we do in order to boost the algorithm or make, you know, things more reachable to other people. And, um, and until then keep healing. Thank you for tuning in to Imperfect Mommy. It's time for us to step up and realize that our power is not in trying to shape our children. Our power lies in shaping ourselves into the people we want our children to model themselves after. Don't just do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. When you become a more self-aware, compassionate, and confident person, you and everyone around you benefit. For more information about me and my work, visit alishalyons.com. That's A-L-Y-S-I-A-L-Y-O-N-S dot com. See you next time.